All right, so Numoth the Nummy is in this draft, but we have to beat this guy, probably, to meet Numoth in the finals. And this has no land. And this is kind of a joke, but we will keep it and bottom that. It's got lands and spells and on a mulligan. I don't really have time to mess around. Okay, well, at least we're getting our our ramp on. And we'll be able to fawn a shaman into something, I'm sure. This guy's just going to draw a million, billion cards. And possibly counter everything that we play. Okay. Well, I want to make sure that we have black, so I'm casting that one first. Since our next one may or may not get counterspelled. Hmm. Okay, okay. Counterspells down. Now, I could get Fauna Shaman. That way I can start searching for creatures. But these are already like our two biggest creatures. I'm just going to ramp. Yeah. Next turn, we can cast Primeval Titan. If he allows us to cast Primeval Titan, then the turn after that, we cast Terastodon from the lands that we search up. Oh my gosh, I think we're going to be allowed to because he's going to play something. Dak Faden? Oh, the savagery. He's going to steal our Golgari Signet too. Oh, sad face. Okay, well let's do Fauna Shaman, Lana War Elves. Actually, no, he can't steal the next turn. But whatever. He's probably gonna have counter spells up for next turn. So this Primeval Titan is probably not happening. Do I want to Elves? Yeah, it guarantees that I play Primeval Titan. Okay. It's very hard to imagine that he won't, <laughs> with his current 10 cards to choose from, that he will not be able to counterspell Primeval Titan. He's throwing out Signets and Moxes. Means he's got all gas. Yes! Tap one of these. Yes! I don't even care what it is. Yeah, I don't care what it is. He's gonna wipe these out with the minus. Yeah, this is fine. Um... But we at least get to play Primeval Titan, which is pretty cool. I don't really want to play this Soul Ring, because then he's just going to steal it. <laughs> oh, jerk face. Okay. I'm surprised that he went shields down at this juncture. Oh wait, no. we. Oh yeah, we can cast it. Because Soul Ring. <laughs> Well, what a good top deck, then. No Force of Will? Yes. Alright, now we're going to get a Lumbering Falls and an Island. That way we can attack, like, Chandra. Alright, that makes me pretty happy. We might even be able to do, like, double Planeswalkers down this turn. Also, every attack that this guy gets, we just get to thin out our deck massively. Like, people talk about fetch lands kind of not, like, being that much thinning, because you're only thinning by one, and you're, you're taking the damage, so there's something to pay. This guy, he thins. Your deck does get thinner. Now he's making hard decisions about all the absurd amount of cards that he gets to use. Between these two, he's never going to zero Chandra because he's been filtering his hand so much that this would be awful. So Dak Faden is probably scarier right now. So I'm probably going to fire this up and put this one. And I'm just, there's no way I'm blocking here. Because if he just has like a bolt or something, then it's over for my Primeval Titan. 
But even if we kill these two, it's not that much of a win because he has seven cards in hand in the Library of Alexandria, you know? Gilded Lotus? Oh my gosh, what is even happening? Hedron Archive? Wow, just cast everything? But now his library is not so great, unless this is a draw spell. Oh my gosh. Are you for realsies? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, well, he's not going to, um, I'm going to keep this in hand because we don't need it, but he's not going to, so I can destroy these and give him elephants. I'm just going to say that he doesn't have force of will in hand. We do have enough mana for this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So I'll probably destroy. I'll probably just destroy like one of my forests as well. just get even on the uh, elephants in the room. Which is hilarious, by the way. Hmm. Yeah, I, I need to kill those planeswalkers. Yes. All right. I don't want to trade this for stupid elephants, so I guess I'm not going to attack. I will probably attack when I also have the Terracidon to attack with. It's probably going to crack this archive, draw two cards, then be back to Library of Alexandria. Which was another possibility for this elephant, but he's just so far ahead on cards, I don't feel like I'm ever gonna, you know, catch up in a meaningful way. He's got a sweet deck. Yeah, this is just a fantastic deck. The thing that I like is he doesn't have anything really, like path or anything like that, it doesn't seem. Like this isn't a duplicate. So once we do get our big creatures down, we do get to, you know, do our thing. But this guy's deck is so good. It's so good that I sincerely question whether or not we're going on to the next round to fight Numa the Nummy. Shrine of Burning Rage? All right, well, I have to kind of question why this is in the deck. I mean, his deck is amazing, so having like one card that's weird is probably fine. What is even happening? 
Blightsteel Colossus. But you're so big, dude. You just hard cast Blightsteel Colossus. He's probably got he's probably got Tinker. So what do we do here? This thing's indestructible, we absolutely cannot attack. Ah, uh, we probably just need to go on to the next game. Okay. So to me, it seems like once once he has something, once we manage to stick something on the field, it doesn't seem like he's that great at getting rid of it, which makes cards like Master of the Wild Hunt really great. Although he was showing like that he might have a lightning bolt at one point, but one bolt I'm not too scared of. Maelstrom Pulse can kill Planeswalkers. Abrupt Decay can kill some Planeswalkers, but this is just not, it's just not worth it against him. So, we gotta get rid of two things. I'll get rid of secure, <sighs> damn it. Well, we're out of batteries for the camera. I am going to put in, so he's got tons of mana rocks, so Reclamation Sage seems hilarious. Conclave Naturalist can do like a similar thing. Same with Acidic Slime, which can kill lands like Library of Alexandria. So what do we not want? Hmm. Well, let's take out, oh, we took out the, where is it? Okay, we're gonna take out Fauna Shaman because this does die to like everything. And I'd rather just have a survival of the fittest that he's much less likely to touch. Hmm. This is gonna be amazing, actually, Garrick. Huh. Maybe slime is just like, not what we want. Yeah. We've got too many cards, but I don't know what to get rid of. All right, let's hope that that's okay. Hmm, it's close to okay. Because if we draw land, we just go off. <sighs> I don't want to mulligan against him twice. I'm going to keep. Even though we're lower on lands now than we were before. <laughs> if he mulligans, then I'm going to feel silly for being greedy when my opponent's being reasonable. All right. We can also draw all of our one drops. They kind of count as land. I'm surprised he doesn't just have us F6 here. There we go. Perfect. Like, so perfect. Okay, so if we do carry added, it's hexproof, and I mean, Secure Tribe Elder does basically the same thing, but this can get white or it can get blue or, yeah, we're just, we're playing carry added.
Great. Let's see what he has to say. Oh, great. He's casting something. Okay, now I really want to draw a land. That way we can just harmonize. Or survival of the fittest. That is fantastic to put down early and kind of just like... But we could Reclamation Sage this, which is amazing. It makes me happy. Yeah, I'm just going to do it just to be a jerk. Yeah, baby. All right. This is sweet. He doesn't have double blue. Metal worker. So this is complicated. We could channel, then harmonize, hope to draw something. Great. We've got lots of big creatures. Or we could survival of the fittest, guarantee that we get one of these great creatures. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so first let's channel. Oh, crap. But we need to have four green to do this. Okay, so we can't do both of those things. We could Maelstrom pulse this thing. But it's actually, he's he might be sandbagging. Let's attack and see what he does. Probably not blocking. Okay, so I am just going to Maelstrom Pulse this thing because it's really, really strong. Also, he's only on one blue mana, so this has been really good for us. Are you serious? <sighs> okay. We'll just have to play Terastodon this turn with Channel, which we can't do because we still have the same problem. Darn it. Okay. We'll play Secure Tribe Elder. Yeah. Let's hope he taps out again this turn. There's a limited amount of counter spells he can have for the one blue though. And even though we've got other colors, we're just going to rely on Sylvan Carry Added to do that. And we're going to get another forest here because we've got so many double greens. This is like hypothetically double green, double green. There's just so many double greens. Come on, dude. Why do you do this to me? Although it is an artifact. We've got artifact blowing up in things. Oh my gosh, I didn't pop this, okay. And we are like really punished for doing that. Because now we can't cast anything, okay. Well that was savage. So we still need this forest for this ridiculous amount of double green stuff. Is there any reason why we would just channel now? No. All right. The great thing is that channel basically ignores Lodestone Golem once you get it up. We just pay one more with 
life and it's all good. I really wish I could kill this. Tooth and nail. <sighs> he can counterspell now, though. Jeez, that's so annoying. He's got six cards. I mean, there's no way that he doesn't have a counterspell right now. Let's play Yavamaya. He probably will not. Counterspell this. And then I can block with it. Basically, time walk both sides. Get some lands. I just need him to be a little bit more aggressive, and he, he has tapped out a lot in the past. Oh, right. Okay, so he does mana drain this. Okay, let's see if he does anything with it. He's got seven mana, so he can cast some pretty big stuff. Maybe this is a Tamiya? That wouldn't bother me so much, though. Unless he taps one of my lands. I guess that would bother me. I also like that he's tapping out on blue. So we do just get to cast whatever next turn. And I really want to draw a land, and then we'll just entwine Tooth and Nail with Channel. And that should give us a great chance of doing well. I'd get Primeval Titan and Terastodon, which is in my hand. So I get Primeval Titan and something. I don't even know. Hmm. I wonder what he can go search with this. That he can cast this turn. I don't know. Maybe nothing? Untap up to two target artifacts. So, I guess he can attack with Lodestone and then give it Vigilance. I am so happy that he tapped out of blue though, it gives me like great pleasure. Not to like rag on this guy, because he obviously drafted an amazing deck, so he's done a great job. But he has, in last game and this game, when he's been ahead... Oh my gosh, yeah, this is an artifact. When he's been ahead, he's been willing to uh, tap out. See, he could have kept this up for like, just pretending that he's got a burn uh, counterspell of some kind. Um, So I feel like he's given away some equity there. Okay, so let's channel Tooth and Nail and just call that good enough. I guess he could have Force. That would be pretty savage. So Tooth and Nail to Entwine, I need 9 mana total. So I need to give up 7 life, go down to 3. Shrine of Burning Rage could be a problem one day. But, you gotta do what you gotta do. Tooth and Nail! Oh, wait, I need to pay again because of this Lodestone Golem. Alright. 
Entwine. So I will get Primeval Titan. And maybe Wolfier Silverheart could be really sweet later, so that I just can have big stuff. Master of the Wild Hunt is really good long, but Shrine of Burning Rage is going to give us like a problem in two turns. I actually probably have to blow that up with, uh, with Terastodon. Okay, so I think we're going to go Primeval Titan, Master the Wild Hunt, and then do put down Terastodon, Master the Wild Hunt, even though that seems crazy, because he seems like he can't kill things that are on the field in a, on average. The Wolf here is probably just, like way more impactful immediately. Let's do the master. Let, let's just assume that we're correct about that. All right, and then this turn, I guess I'm just gonna try to get the master down later. Let's just put these two on the hand, on the battlefield, sorry. And let's look for, let's destroy some things then look for some lands. So non-creature permanence. I'm gonna destroy Shrine of Burning Rage, Tezzeret. Probably ridiculous to destroy one of my own forests. I could destroy his island. This guy has had like such a hard time casting stuff. <sighs> hmm. I guess. Or I could just do forest and try to get my beats on. Well, I guess in the comments you guys can tell me whether or not you think I should have done it either way, but I'm gonna do my forest and get my beats on. Yes, that's why I targeted things. Okay. Yes. So we could get Island Lumbering Falls or Swamp Lumbering Falls just in case of Villainous Wealth. Probably doesn't even matter. Because when we attack with Primeval Titan, we're still going to get the the island to turn this on. We're playing this so close to the chest because if he activates this, we have exactly the right amount of blockers. It's tempting to attack with Primeval Titan next turn if we have a next turn. And then getting our land, but he can trade off for it so easily. I like attacking with Terracidon and putting him under like the Abyss just every turn he has to like lose a creature. And we're not in a super rush to play things. Like, next turn I'm probably just going to play Master of the Wild Hunt and call that it. Because, yeah, he's tapping out again. Let's see what he plays. Guess he could play Jace the Mind Sculptor. That would be pretty sweet. 
We can't recast either one of these. <laughs> Hmm? Now I'm confused. Oh, okay, he played a land. So yeah, I'm happy I didn't blow up the island. This guy's got an amazing deck though. So we're gonna we're gonna have a hard time fighting through the next round if we get there. Okay, let's see what's happening. Something's happening. Dig through time? That's a good card. So, because he just dug through time, we have one turn to do whatever we want. Because he tapped out again. Hmm. Oh right, I need to hit okay for this. Yeah, I'm just passing priority. Okay, sweet, so our Lumbering Falls activation, we can now kind of do on on the easy cheesy. All right. So I think I'm gonna Thran Dynamo and then Master of the Wild Hunt. And then attack with Terastodon and try to do this like Abyss Him plan. While getting a creature of our own every turn is the important part in this plan. I really hope he doesn't steal this thing with uh, Tezzeret, that would just make me sad. Alright, Terastodon. Rawr. He's just taking nine? Oh my gosh. That's pretty awesome. Alright, let's see what he's got. He just dug through time and then drew. So if he was gonna have something sweet, it'd be right now. Chrome Mox. Okay, we're ramping to something. Wonder what he's exiling. Is that what that is? Yeah. Blue, blue, blue. Lots of blue. Gilded Lotus? Okay. He can cast like a Dak with the Sylvan carry added. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Island Walk? Oh my god. OMG. Okay, we can survival for the fittest for an acidic slime, right? Do we still have the acidic slime? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so what happens if we just put up the lumbering falls and swing in? So the Primeval Titan has to be blocked with 6 toughness in order to completely blank it. Let's just say the Terracidon gets blocked by an elephant, that's very likely. Then the Master of the Wild Hunt gets blocked by an elephant, the elephant by a Lodestone Golem, and the Rex Sage by 
Thada, and then he goes to one. But if we do the Lumbering Falls, then we've got lethal. Is that right? Okay. We will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attackers. He will have four blockers. So three of our things are getting through, no matter what. Then, when our three things get through, the things that are the worst things to get through for us, oh wait, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six things, two things are getting through. Oh, he disconnected. Um, so six things are going through, two things are getting through. Um, so if two things are getting through, then the weakest two things to get through are like, uh, like Reclamation Sage and a Lumbering Falls. In which case, all of these things get blocked. This is like five, and then for the trample over, we've definitely got trample. So I think we got this. Let's hope that I actually did the math correctly. I think we took out the ooze too. I think that's not a possibility. Yeah, I think there's no way for him to block correctly here. Yep. Great. So now we have time to redecide how we feel about this deck. The first thing that we feel about it is that we didn't have time to uh, cut last time. <laughs> um, so hypothetically we would still be cutting here. Hmm. So this can search for a creature card, but if it just was that creature card, we're not really in a life race, so I'm okay with that. These Conclave Naturalists and the Acidic Slime just seem so good against him. He's just always got artifacts and good lands. Hmm. Let's just do the 41 because I'm greedy. All right, a playable hand. I'll keep it. Keepsies. All right, so I'm probably going to do a search for tomorrow here. Uh, 
and I have nothing that important going on in the upcoming turns, so I'll probably just do the Lumbering Falls. And then since this guy tends to... Oh, sweet, actually, forget that. I can wait on that. Um, since this guy tends to tap out a lot, I think we are going to be able to Villainous Wealth him. Let's just play our Elves. Next turn we'll do, like, Carry Added, Lumbering Falls. Wait for him to tap out for us to do Villainous Wealth on him. Oh my gosh, that is really scary. Good thing that we don't have... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Turn off auto yields. Um, we're just never going to play an island. <laughs> that is the new plan. We'll play this Lumbering Falls. And a carry it in. And I feel like he's going to play a Mana Rock or something, so hopefully we can Rex Age it. Hedron Archive? This is a Hedron Archive. I'm just going to, like, be so happy. Lodestone Golem? Perfect. Oh my gosh, that is just such value. Yes. Come on. All right. And soon when he taps out, we will be able to villainous wealth for a decent amount. We just need just the tiniest bit more, like land drops or ramp or whatever, before I feel happy about it. Like 100% happy about it. Oh my gosh, wow. Value Town. Because I want to Villainous Wealth him for like 7, so we need 10 mana. So that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Maybe we do it next turn. He is tapped out now though. If we cast it now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we hit him for six, we get to do everything for six with convert mana cost six or less. <sighs> that is most of everything that he's playing is six or less. <sighs> Let's do it. Let's spin the wheel while he's tapped out. Black, blue, five, six. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah. I'll do all of it. Yes, yes, yes. Great. So do I want to do two cards or an artifact? I'll do artifact and toss out the Gruel Signet. And then take a free Chandra, which I will then take up. Great. And he's already giving up. That's how you know that you won. All right. Also, this is going on YouTube. Like, I haven't been amazing at, like, recording and making sure that this was all smooth. But if we go to the finals, I'm going to be pretty happy. Because I just really want to beat this guy now. When he says that, that just makes me want to beat him so badly. Ooh, copy of any artifact. Solemn Simulacrum. 
Value Town. Hmm. I mean, this all is his fault for tapping out so much as a blue deck. In my opinion. Why did I play that land? I've got Chandra. Yes, of course. Come on. Great. Let's get in there. Yeah, heck. Why not? All right, let him do his thing. He's got really amazing cards, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's still got this. Okay, so I'm gonna tick this up. Okay. Attack, 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 attack. It's probably fine. Oh man, no effects. All right. This guy's deck was amazing. So yeah, I've I've been I've been actually pointing out a lot what my mistakes were. Yeah, here he had the onboard shrine of burning rage, so I didn't end up killing him. But he's still in dire straits. I feel like we have a good chance of this. We could have also gilded Lotus to Lumbering Falls activate. You know, all sorts of stuff, but once he got the Chandra going, you know. It's it's all good. All right. So let's let's give him the pass. He could still very much very well win. I don't know everything that's in this uh in this cube. Dig through time. Well, if he has an answer, he's gonna find it. The problem is, is that our our threats are so well spread out. We've got one threat that's on Chandra, one in Lumbering Falls, and then creatures, obviously. So it would be, I don't know, I can't 
think of the card, like up Upheaval. Uh, does Upheaval remove Planeswalkers? I don't know. A lot of those old cards weren't templated in such a way that it removed Planeswalkers. Just trying to think of something that could win him the game. He's looking for something that could win him the game. And yeah, I made some mistakes. The thing about mistakes and playing MTGO on, you know, w when you're like trying to like stream it or whatever, like I personally give those people a lot of credit. I never give them like bad, bad comments and stuff because it is really hard to keep blabbering just constantly and play good magic. It is legitimately difficult. So. I assume right now he's just trying to get the clock. Yeah, played Tezzeret. Searching for a, f a three. Metal worker. Okay. Do a forest. Get the good old red elementals. I have no idea what he's talking about. All right, well, that's a lot of damage. Well, let's try to leave on a positive note. Complement his drafting. And you know, I'll get better at the whole talking while playing magic thing. Okay, there we go. Alright, well, that was a great game.